Hey guys, Dan with Create Minis, and in this video, I'm going to paint up one of my favorite characters in the Star Wars universe. Also, I'm going to be painting Cassian. So, in order to spice things up a little bit, let's see how many K2 lines I can reference during this video. Let's check it out. <laughs> If you've been looking for a video to learn how to paint Cassian and K2 for Star Wars Legion, congratulations, you're being rescued, because that's exactly what I'm about to do. K2 comes with four different arm options, two left and two right. For the left arm, we're going to choose the comlink option, and for the right arm, we're going to choose the blaster, because if Jin Erso gets a blaster, why wouldn't he? For Cassian, I'm simply going with the rule of cool and giving him the long rifle. Start out by removing the model pieces from the sprues. Their numbers coordinate to the diagrams in the book. Clip the model as close as you can without actually damaging the model itself. Once you clip them, we're going to be removing the little bit of sprue that may be left with an X-Acto knife. Taking the blade edge, I carefully cut away the larger sections of sprue left on the feet. This area won't be seen, so if I cut into the model accidentally, it will be okay. For anything a little more finesse, I would use the back of the blade so as not to actually cut away any of the base material. To glue the model together, I'm using plastic glue, with seeing as this is one of the harder plastic models. I use Tamiya Fine Cement, and you can find it online just about anywhere or at your local hobby store. Support local stores. When fitting the arms in order to get the right orientation, you can actually take the arm and twist it slightly and you'll see it slides into place and becomes a little bit harder to rotate once it's seated in correctly. I recommend doing it this way as FFG has done a nice job with these models and it helps eliminate gaps and creates a tight fit. The same can be said about both arms, although this joint's a little bit harder, but the same concept applies. Orientate the head so he's looking down the barrel, and we're ready to go. For Cassian, I glued the torso, but I'm going to dry fit the arms. What I'll do here is make sure they're in the correct spot, and then take the thin cement and paint it along the backside of the short arm. Once that's had a chance to set, I remove the long arm and glue the rest of the short arm in. I'll leave the long arm off during painting so I can more easily reach the inside of the gun and any of the detailing that I need. Then I'll take a small hobby drill and using a size just smaller than his neck diameter, we'll drill a small hole so I can mount it on a toothpick for easier painting. I'll then do the same with the backpack, drilling a hole in an indiscreet spot that will be covered up once we mount it. And now we're ready to prime. Uh, for primer, I use the Rust-Oleum Matte Black and Flat White. Black for K2 and white for all the rest. It's a cheap primer you can pick up at a hardware store, but it works great. It has great coverage and always puts a smooth finish in everything that I've tried. I tried a couple different primers, but found there was a 97.6% chance of failure, and I finally settled on this one as I've had a better result. To start out, I'm going to paint the undershirt, and I'm going to use chocolate brown.
After successfully coating the undershirt, I move on to the boots and apply the same color. Next, for the fur lining around his hood, I swap over to a Rackarth Flesh. Paint all around the hood, and don't worry if you get a little sloppy, we're going to be covering it up with darker colors later. Now's the time to paint fast and loose. These colors are going to be your base colors, and we'll frame them in later to get a cleaner design. Once the hood is painted, let's move on to the belt. Again, we're gonna paint fast and loose here. You can try and make everything clean from the start, but I'm not very optimistic about our odds, so I'm gonna just slap it on and I'll trim it up later with the blue color we add to the coat. Once you complete the belt, now it's time to paint the trim on the jacket. While doing this, don't forget about the second arm that you have on the side. For every step we do on the main model, you're going to want to repeat the process over on that model to save you time. Once the trim is done, you can use the same color on the gloves, as it has a similar pattern throughout. Next, I'll take the two colors that we've been using, Rackarth Flesh and Chocolate Brown, and mix them together to get a nice, warm, earthy, sandy brown color that I'm going to paint on the pants. Next, with everything trimmed up, it's time to paint the jacket blue, and for this, I used a combination of dark blue and white. Now, why, you might ask, am I going to take dark blue and lighten it up to lighter blue? Why don't I just buy light blue? Well, I chose to take an artistic approach here and create a custom color. And if you found that answer rather vague and unconvincing, you would be correct. In truth, it was the only blue that I had, and I didn't like how dark it was when I originally put it on the palette, so I lightened it up a bit. Along with getting a blue base coat on the jacket, now's the time to start lining in some of your details. This will cover up the tan or flesh color that you may have gotten in areas you didn't want. Take your brush and wet the paint down a little bit, take your time, and using a nice fine point, get in and get those tight details and create some sharp lines.
Now, if you do make a mistake and you get some paint where you don't want it, don't worry about it. Just go back and get that original base color back out and touch it up where you need to. Cassian's tool belt is full of nifty gadgets, including these things, whatever they are. If you know what they are, drop me a comment below and let me know, because I still don't know what they are. But for this, I used Refractive Green from Vallejo, and I was just trying to pick something out that gave it a little bit more of a pop of color to break up the monotony of the tans and browns that I had been using. Next, I'm painting this holster using German Black Brown. Don't forget to paint the strap under his leg here, and as you can see, I missed a little bit of detailing with the tan color I used earlier, so I'll go back and touch this up now. I could always go back and do it later, but the chances of me forgetting are high. Very high. Next, I'm taking this mystery object and I'm painting the top half of it gray because of course it's gray because I know exactly what it is. But if, if you think you know what it is, let me know in the comments below. Until then, get out your neutral gray and paint the top half. After that, I'm going to be painting the electro binoculars hanging on his back. Now on to his sniper rifle, and uh, most importantly what we want to do here is get adequate coverage on the inside where we can't see when we put the model back together. I'm just going to be using black and getting a nice base coat down. Remember, the only important part here is the part that's going to be obscured. You can always paint the other half later. With the hard parts covered, I take a little bit of super glue and make a tiny dab on the end of each part and assemble the model. With the model assembled, we can now paint the outside of the rifle a lot easier. Now we're going to give the model a wash with Agrax Earthshade. 
we will start at the bottom and we're going to end up coating the entire model. Now you might say, but why? What about blue? Blue doesn't need to be washed in brown. And to that I say quiet. And there's a fresh one if you mouth off again. We're going to give this whole model a nice dirty, dingy look as if he's seen some battle. Trust me, it'll look good in the end. But then again, what do I know if my specialty is only strategic analysis in terms of miniature painting? And by now, if you're not impressed with my painting, perhaps you'll be impressed with the fact that I'm still going with these terrible K2 references. And if you are impressed with either, perhaps you'd like to support the channel. You can do so by becoming a patron. A link to my Patreon is down below. Patrons have access at the operative level to exclusives such as a PDF download of all of the paints that I use today showing exactly where on the models I use them. I also have a private Discord channel where we can chat about anything Star Wars, Star Wars Legion, or anything else you fancy, interact with other members, and have some say on some future content. After the model has fully dried and is looking fantastic, we're going to make it look even better by using Lead Belcher to highlight the raised edges with a dry brush. So with the torso pretty much set, we're going to set it aside and now we're moving on to the head. For the skin tone, we're going to start out with a contrast paint, Darkoth Flesh. Coat the model evenly and then wick away the puddles in the deep spots such as the eye sockets or in the mouth area, wherever it may be pooling a little too much. Next, I mixed white with a little bit of glaze medium to thin it up a little bit and I gently dropped the white into the eye sockets. Now I don't like painting eyes, nobody does, but Cassian said I had to. Next, ensuring the white has fully dried, I'll thin down some black paint and try to paint a pupil. I basically just touch as lightly as possible and having the paint thin just enough to transfer but not immediately fill the eye socket is the key here. After looking at the face more, I wasn't necessarily as happy with the tone, so I used some basic flesh tone from Vallejo and dry brushed it quickly. Then I took chocolate brown and began to line in the hair. Here's where you want to be careful, you don't want the brown paint to pool onto your flesh toned area. After that's had a chance to dry, we go back to the Agrax Earthshade and give an ample coating to all of his hair. I still wasn't happy with the tone, so I used the basic flesh tone again mixed with just a tint of white and highlighted some of the raised areas such as the nose and the cheeks and a little bit of the mouth area. Now for his beard, you can try to paint it in or follow the little raised edges, but I think that's a bad idea and so does Cassian. So I'm getting a dry brush here. Basically I will take a little bit of German grey and I'm going to remove as much of it as I possibly can from my brush then lightly dry brush over his skin. The key here, less is more. If you do too much, it's gonna smudge and it's gonna look silly. We want it to look like he has a five o'clock shadow type look. And trust me, it'll take a little bit of time, but the lighter you can go and the less paint you can put on will give it more of a shadow type effect.
It's a fine process between going back and forth between the German gray and the flesh tone, touching up the areas you don't want to get gray with the flesh and dry brushing some more. After you're happy, pencil in the mustache with a little bit more of a deeper color by putting a little more paint on the brush and making it darker. Lastly, I took just a little bit of a flesh wash and colored it around the mouth in order to give it a little bit more color from all the dry brushing. Speaking of dry brushing, I took the tan color that we used for the pants earlier and now I'm using it to highlight his hair. But don't forget those eyebrows, you want Cassie to be as expressive as possible and frankly he just looks weird without them. Once you're happy, glue the head on the body and Cassian is almost complete. Next, let's quickly finish off the backpack. For this, we will detail the scope in black. Then we're going to use German Grey to paint this donut looking thing on his backpack. Again, I don't, I don't know what these trinkets are. So if you know, please put a comment below. And honestly, guys, you in the comments, your behavior is continuously unexpected. And finally, for the base coat, let's slap some chocolate brown all over the backpack area. After that, we'll take the lead belcher and highlight with a dry brush all of the darker areas on the backpack, and then we will go back to the Agrax Earthshade and soak the brown areas in to give it some depth. Put it all together, and we've actually got a pretty nice quality tabletop Cassian model. And we've also reached the end of my K2 quotes, which I know you're probably happy about. It also doesn't sound so bad to me either. Okay, okay, I'm done. Let's move on to K2. K2 we primed black, and we're going to start with German Gray and give it a dry brush all over the entire model. Then, we go back to the lead belcher. Focusing first on the gun, I decided that this effect was actually pretty cool, and then I decided to lightly transfer it to the rest of the model. Remove the majority of the lead belcher from your brush, and give it a nice light dry brush over the entire thing. After that, take some lead belcher onto a normal brush and dab it into the eyes. It'll give it a more bright metallic look. Then, let's detail in some of the hinges on his legs, arms, and ankles. To do this, paint the little center section with the lead belcher, focusing on the top more than the bottom. If you don't get paint all the way in there, that's okay. As long as you hit the top side, it'll give the effect we're looking for. Just try to minimize pushing the paint onto the black areas surrounding it. Try and keep your lines small and sharp. Then I decided to dry brush a little bit with it using the edge of my brush on some of the cool little details on K2 himself. Some of the buttons and vents on his back and arms, and then I also took it so far as to detail some of the front of him. You, any raised area that you want to highlight it adds a little more depth to the model.
And then we're gonna add just a splash of color to all this black and silver by painting these stripes along the inside of his arms yellow. Any areas where the yellow overran can be touched up with German Grey without being too noticeable. And with that, we've got an awesome tabletop quality K2. Now, I like to add a little extra detail flair, and for this I'm going to use some decals. I found these decals on Etsy, and they're little Imperial and Inferno logo symbols. What you do here is you take a sharp X-Acto knife and cut out the tiny decals that you want. They're printed onto an actual decal sheet and require a little bit of water to separate. So cut out the little decals and then add them to a little bit of water. I poured some water and rolled a little base here, but anything will do. Once the decals are in there, make sure they're fully submerged and let them sit for anywhere from 45 to 60 seconds and you should see the decals start to come off. To prep the model, add a little bit of water to the spot you're going to be using the decal. See here how it's sliding away? Carefully grab the decal with your knife or with the tweezers and place it onto the part of the model that you've prepped with water. While having the water on the surface, there is enough surface tension where the decal almost floats. You're able to position it wherever you want and then press down on it to try and remove some of the water below it. Once you've got it right where you want it, take a tiny piece of paper towel or cloth and push it on, removing the water. See? These looks great. Once they dry completely, then take some matte varnish to completely seal them in so that way they don't fall off. After the matte varnish has had time to dry, you can go back with the color. In this case, I used a mixture of black and German gray, and I detail around the edges to help obscure the clear edge of the decal that's not printed on a little bit easier. Here, you can see it almost disappears from view. And with that, you no longer have to suffer through my terrible K2 quotes. I mean, come on, I got a dozen. That's impressive, right? but you've also got yourself two well-painted models. So there you have it guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you wanna see a different character painted, put a comment down below, hit me a like, hit that subscribe button so that way you don't miss any future videos. And if you really like what I'm doing, throw me some support, I have a Patreon with my link down below. You can join my good friends Hal and Tim all the way from the Netherlands. I also started a Discord with the link available to any operative in my Patreon. Come talk about anything Star Wars, anything Star Wars Legion. Let's talk about painting, lists, different games you've played, whatever you want to. Come in, hit up the chat. We're all friends and family here. Until next time, keep on creating.